We are in a field today, and as you can see, we have two incredibly beautiful birds. There's a question that's been burning with me. is like, you know, this is the most advanced Phantom on the planet ever made. The fourth version with the Pro on it, right? And you even got the little special screen. You get to pay extra for that. And this is the first version of the Inspire, because we know there's an Inspire 2, but this is also the Pro version of that. As you can see, I have an X5 floating on the bottom of it. Which and is the camera. That is the camera. The X5 is the Zenmus X5, the camera. And we had a question that we wanted to ask each other. Which one is better? The way B put it to me a little while ago I thought was great was when the Inspire came out, it was a step up from the um, Phantom. Yes. And at the time, it was the Phantom 3, maybe? Yeah, Phantom 3 Pro. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now, with the Phantom 4 Pro uh, and the X5 on the bottom of that, which one is better? Also, wanted to talk a little bit about use cases. To say which is better is not really fair, right? One's going to be better in, a, in some situations and one's going to be better in others. This is my baby. Um, the Inspire, and that's his that's Phantom my, 4 that's Pro. That's my Phantom 4 Pro, baby. We're gonna do a bunch of tests today to see, uh, like he said, we're gonna figure out which one's better for what situations, and we're gonna bring you guys through it. So, let's get started. Let's do it! All right, so what we wanna do first is just give a general comparison, and not trying to be Captain Obvious here, but uh, obviously, the Inspire is a bigger bird. Um, it's bigger, it weighs more, it requires a significantly bigger case, although uh, from what B tells me it will fit in a smaller case than this, but yeah. I'd say in the idea of portability and also time to get out and fly, this guy I can have up in the air even with a little safety check in 60 to 90 seconds. That probably takes you at least three or four minutes. Yeah, about five minutes. Okay. Quality is queen. Quality is queen. Oh, I'm yeah, here yeah, to talk about the yeah. camera. You might win, it might fly longer, it might be easier to move around, it might be smaller, who cares? My image quality is really where it's at. And then, you know, we can even take it a step further and say, I don't even have my second controller out right now. That's because, true. You know, we can also do moves that you can't do. I do acknowledge that depending on what the client is and what the need is, there's certain areas where having a more compact drone that you might be able to catch with your hands or take off in smaller places or travel to smaller places could be useful. It's, you know, so it, it so are you acknowledging it. me that you heard me? As, as, uh, I appreciate that. I yeah. appreciate your acknowledgement, and uh, I acknowledge you as well. However, I would like to say one other thing, and this is an old saying that a lot of photographers use. What's the best camera for the job? It's the camera you have with you. And so if you can't always have this guy with you, and if this is easier to have with you, perhaps sometimes it is the better camera. In terms of sensor size and everything, I know this has a one inch, uh, I think it's a 20 megapixel uh, camera mm -hmm. built into it. Um, can you change your lenses on that? That cannot change lenses. Oh, we can't change? Okay, I just wonder. Uh, hmm. Another advantage of having the ability to change these lenses is that you can force perspective. I mean, it gives you a whole different look, whereas you're pretty much stuck with your incredibly wide angle lens over there. True. Um, True. It's a beautiful camera, like I said, it's beautiful. And it doesn't have spherical distortion. It doesn't. Like, like the GoPro and some of the older ones. It doesn't. This is a really good, like I said, it's a good camera, but this is a great one. We are going to fly some similar routes. We're shooting at 1080, 60 frames. That's how Ready Set Drone does it. That's how Kelly does it. So we're doing it that way today. Yeah, that's win in Texas, right? Win in Texas. Yeah. Here we go. So Brennan, we're up in the air. Uh, we're sitting at about, I'm sitting at about 33 feet. Um, it's pretty good wind. I'd say the yeah, gusts are coming up about 15 yeah, miles definitely an about hour 15. and might be a little harder up there. Now my hands are off the sticks. Are your hands off hands the sticks? Hands off the sticks. Okay. They're both bouncing up and down just a little bit. It looks to me like the Inspire is more. It is. Um, and then, you know, a little bit, just a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. But, uh, but then as far as like sitting in one place, uh, they both seem to be about the same. I mean, they're both yeah. They're the wind's not blowing. Pretty they're locked chilling. in, yeah. and you can see in the footage from the drones. You know, you can kind of tell if they're moving left and right from the drones. Yeah. Uh, and again, we're not touching the sticks right now, guys. So, nope. so basically, all this motion that you're seeing is caused by the either wind. GPS or the wind. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> opinion, uh, it's a tie in terms of motion, and it's a little bit advantage to the um, Phantom in terms of up and down. I agree with that. All right. So, Kelly. You may have asked me on the last thing, but what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the color space and uh, pretty much the camera. So what we're going to do is we have a little a sign over here for the home of the Mustang that has a little bit of red on it. It has some depth of field behind it with some houses and some trees and all that. So we're just going to do a real simple flight. We're going to take it right over top of us. We're just going to do just straight over top of the sign. And we're doing it at 120 shutter. Also, one other thing to point out is that we are not flying with any ND filters right now. Um, so we're just doing straight out camera the way it is. I just hit my record button. I'm just going to so go right between the goalposts. Oh, here. you're just going to get fancy right now, huh? Well. So 
So there's that scoreboard. You can see there's some red, there's some blue, there's green in the grass. Here we go. So we just did a camera test straight on, and I think we have to go back to the studio and check it out. I also just want to make a quick uh, caveat and say that really just, you know, want you to be able to see the difference between the quality in these two cameras, the ability for them to stay in one place in high wind, and a little bit of their flight characteristics. Bam! We made it to the office. It is day number two of our Inspire versus Phantom 4. We're here looking at the footage. Looking at the premiere. footage. Yep. So I have three clips pulled up on here. Quality two, is queen. Two up. Quality is queen. Two of these are the uh, from the Inspire. One is from the Phantom 4. And let's take a look. So as you can see, looks pretty darn good. Little, yeah, little yeah, dark. it's a little dark, a um, little flat. Uh, I shot it flat. Now that's one thing that I'll say I take responsibility for. One thing that we didn't do is we didn't do the same color profile. It's because I'm so used to using my color profile shooting flat, because um, I work with post-production houses and they do a lot of work with the color space mm -hmm. afterwards. The whole reason you shoot flat is because, you know, somebody's like, oh, we're shooting this on an Ari or a Red or a, you know, a C300 or something like that. We want it to it. match. And we want the footage to match, so you shoot it flat so you can make it look like all the footage was shot on yep. the same camera. Using LUTs, right? Yeah, so I shot it flat. Um, you shot it in, I think, the standard Phantom 4 color yes. profile. So Correct. that is disclaimer. So now let's check out how the Phantom 4 did. And first of all, wider lens, so a little different look. Um, you know, I, I could see the advantage of a narrower lens as far as being closer to things, yeah. but you know, for landscapes, wide's nice. Uh, definitely brighter and more saturation, you know, it just looks more colorful and more bright. Now, uh, this has 11 stops yes. of, of uh, aperture control. Yes. Which, how many does the Inspire have? I think it's around 22. Don't hold me to that, guys. Okay. Don't hold me to that. But Somewhere in that range, but more. I've never had to go that high. <laughs> but, but, but a lot more a lot more aperture control. Yes. Out of the box, this looks pretty darn nice. Yeah, it does. Well, so what is our conclusion? I'm actually going to call it a tie. And I'm calling it a tie for a really good reason. Like, if I'm a single person that's just like, hey, I just want to fly this for a semi-professional, like prosumer things, I might be doing it for real, real estate or doing it for my buddies or weddings and things like that, I'm taking the Phantom 4 Pro all day. There's no reason to even think about it and inspire in that sense. But if I'm going to go, like, professional route and say, no, I want to work with people who do film, I want to work with people who are making these videos, I want to work with people who know what they're talking about when it comes to cameras, I want to work on the professional scale, then you got to start at the Inspire 1 Pro and up. And one other thing to consider is that, you know, you, yeah, you can interchange the lenses, but if you get on a tighter lens, like a 50 millimeter equivalent or something like that, then it's much more difficult. Focusing is a factor. Like with the super wide lens on the Phantom, it's always in focus. It's infinity focus. But with the, you know, you start getting on these tighter frames and it's like focus becomes a thing. Yeah, you yeah. Pay attention to that. Yep. So I guess uh, for all the viewers out there, if you're kind of scratching your head debating between the Phantom 4 Pro and the Inspire, it's really what are you going to do with it, you know, and your point about uh, if you're working with filmmakers or doing music videos or working with car companies or, you know, people that just need gorgeous, beautiful shots to match other cameras, uh, Inspire. Oh, yeah. If you're dealing with uh, weddings and corporate, you know, and, and stuff where, um, where it needs to look really good in the Phantom 4 Pro, you know. At the end of the day, the Phantom 4 Pro is such a big leap from the Phantom 3 and even the Phantom 4 that it does put you into that ballpark. I would say professional, but I wouldn't say cinematic professional. I say we call it a tie. Uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in for this. Um, yeah, absolutely. Make sure that you subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone if you haven't already done and that. And Droner if you haven't already done that. Ah, because we out here doing this now because we can. And um, what is what is it? What, what should they do? They should definitely get, no, stay, no, be, no. Stay fly, guys. Stay fly. Thanks.